in the series. Freddie? Before the series, I didn't think it was possible. And I'm not just going to use game two as a barometer. I'm glad that we got a series. And I did not expect that San Antonio was going to sweep Oklahoma City. The reason I believe that Oklahoma City has more than a fair chance now is because I love what I heard from Russell Westbrook after game two. He said, hey, we are in no position to get on our high horse and think that we have a series now. We got to go out there. We got to play the same way in game two, the same way we did not play in game one, the same way that we have not played all season long. A happy team usually will get bad results if they're not careful. I'm paraphrasing what he said after the game. Two years ago, you would have never heard that from Russell Westbrook or Kevin Durant. They would have they would have gotten a split against San Antonio, and I'm guaranteed they would probably think in NBA Finals, no one is going to stop us. They're like, look. We are in no position to say to anybody that we're in this series. We got to go out there and not prove anything to anybody else. But we got to do it for ourselves because we don't know how long this is going to last. We don't know how long this is going to be together. I don't think Kevin Durant's leaving, but that possibility still exists that he can go elsewhere in free agency when it's all said and done. Because of what I heard and their demeanor, I said, you know what? Maybe this team has finally figured it out. It can't just be about us having more talent than anybody else or out talenting people. We have to go out there and play basketball. We have to go out there and have greediness, and we have to go out there and have toughness. When I heard that from Russell Westbrook, I said, hmm, I'm not guaranteeing it, but when I heard that, I said, okay, if you guys can maximize what I saw in game two and find that toughness and hold serve in game three and game four, what, I give Oklahoma City more than a chance to win this series what is, more than uh, ever before. To, pu to push you a little bit, Freddie, what does a fair chance mean? What is fair, to more me, than a chance? Because I don't think anybody thought Oklahoma City was going to beat San Antonio in the right. series, period. I mean, Oklahoma City fans thought that, but you ask anybody outside of that, it, yeah, that, that team's going to self-destruct in the fourth quarter. That team's going to find a way to give away a game or two. And I thought the same thing, Will and George. I, I said before the series, yep, yeah, I've seen this team blew fourth quarter leads. Only the Sacramento Kings blew more four, fourth quarter leads than, than San Antonio. Them, Oklahoma City in the regular season. So I'm thinking, they're going to find a way to screw this up. But well, then they didn't. What, you can get into the referees' calls and all that other nonsense, but they found that toughness and greatness, and then they weren't just fat and happy after I'll that game you, was I'll over. I'll put a number on it. I think the Thunder have about a 25% chance of winning this series. I mean, better than a slim odd, mm -hmm. but definitely nothing close to a 50-50 chance mm -hmm. of winning this series. I know it's an arbitrary random number, but if I'm, if I'm forced to pick which game is more representative of this series, what was it, a 32-point blowout for the Spurs or a controversial one-point win for the Thunder, I think I tend more towards the 32-point blowout. But honestly, if I just average the two, I come to about a 15 and a half point average margin of victory for the Spurs, which would give the Thunder maybe a game, maybe two games. And I think that's about what this series is. I pointed out to you, George, that I think versatility and being able to play different ways in a series is key to winning. I think the Cavs have that versatility. The Spurs have shown both in this series and throughout their history under Greg Popovich, an ability to make adjustments. That's what playoff basketball is, right? Seven games perhaps, five, six, make adjustments. You win one game one way and you come back the next and win in a different way. Constantly playing chess with the other coach. Well, guess what? They have the best chess master on their team with Greg Popovich. And that's not just a generic cliche I'm offering you. They are playing differently today than they did earlier this season. I mean. LaMarcus Aldridge averaging 32 points a game, playing isolation ball. That's winning games, losing by one controversial point in the second game. But they're winning games that way. Pop can switch it. They'll start shooting threes. They'll start playing team pass ball. And I take that team over two heroes. Granted, two very good heroes. I'll disagree with Mark Cuban. Two, super, <laughs> two superstars. They are two in superstars. Durant and Westbrook. No doubt. I'll take that chess match versatile team with Greg Popovich at the helm in about a 75% odds to win the series. Listen, I'm with you in this regard. Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, top five, six players, right? We could yep. all agree on that mm -hmm. for the most part. The rest of that Oklahoma City team, you got to mix and match them. That's the problem. There's not a lot of versatile two-way players on that team. And with a team like San Antonio, who is the ultimate epitome, right? The example of versatility, that's going to spell some trouble. You are right in this regard. In their short playoff history, right, they're now two and six, I believe, in games, Oklahoma City, in San Antonio. But the average margin of loss is about 20 points per game. Wow. So there you go. And the only two wins were the win in game two and game five in 2012 where the Oklahoma City went on to go on to the NBA Finals. So, yeah, they've struggled in San Antonio. Though we've seen San Antonio in the recent series a couple of years ago be able to go right into Oklahoma City and win a game. 
And I think we can sit here and trust that San Antonio, because of their versatility, because of their experience, because of the way LaMarcus Aldridge is playing right now, that you feel comfortable saying, yeah, I feel like they can go back and recapture home court advantage. Here's the one thing I noticed in that last game that I found odd from the get-go with San Antonio. You don't normally see this. They normally run plays through completion. They yeah. are laser-focused yep. with precision in their offense. And during one of the timeouts, it was tweeted by, I believe it's Anthony Slater, Anthony Slater. Who, who covers OKC, that Greg Popovich grabbed Manu Ginobili and, and called him over and said, hey, what was the play that I called there? And that Manu started to respond, and he, he just shut him up and said, run the bleeping play. And that's, that goes to show you where the Spurs' minds were, which is really rare for yeah. them. Look for them to be laser-focused in Game 3. And, and I think yeah. that Will's on to something. I think that San Antonio is still the better team here. Our BPI, our Basketball Power Index, only gives, I think, OKC a 36% chance to win this series, even at this stage, evening up the series and taking home court advantage. That, to me, speaks volumes. I think San Antonio is still the team to beat here. I, I, if Oklahoma City wins Game 3... That's going to be interesting because now for the first time in a long time, San Antonio is going to have that pressure like, oh, my goodness, if we lose game four, we're one game from elimination against a team that we know that we're better than. But right now we're looking up at them in the series. I can't wait to see how San Antonio comes out in game three because, to your point, it seemed to me they were trying to play hero ball early. Mm -hmm. Let's knock these moles out right now. This way we don't give them any confidence. And the harder they tried – and then they couldn't put Oklahoma City away. Oklahoma City is like, yo, you can keep knocking at us. We're not going anywhere. And then Westbrook got started. And Durant was so efficient, 11 to 19. Then Steven Adams, the man who loves to just bust on people, the, the proud Kiwi from New Zealand, he imposed his will on the defensive boards. And then San Antonio had a problem matching up with him. If I see that from Oklahoma City tonight and San Antonio trying too hard, don't be surprised we get the same result we saw in game two and Oklahoma City win. Look, Westbrook and Durant are capable of winning you a couple of games just on sheer talent alone. I mean, we've seen it happen so many times. But, yeah, ultimately the better team in this series is San Antonio. I, I don't think there's any no, question. There, there's no this. panic in San Antonio. Yeah. There's well, no I never panic. said that. No, I didn't not say that. Not but, with Poppin' yeah, But if they go down 2-1, <laughs> the but they've, they've gone down 2-1. I think, no more, I think a little no, bit more. I think a little bit more. I agree with you. I still think they'd be. No they'd I think okay. a little more said and down to one. Well, OKC has won 11 of the last 13 versus the Spurs at home. So who do you, who do you think is going to win tonight, at least? Game by game predictions are much so hard. Are they? <laughs> so hard. This are is the they? That's why. This is why. the tough questions. <laughs> well, look, this is why seven game series you can either love them or hate them because they become ultimately predictable. I've argued, by the way, that the NBA should shorten their playoff series to allow for a little more. Um, I'm on, I'm given, I agree with you. Given Sunday element to it. They should be yeah. best three out of five in the first but round. But on I a totally game by agree. game basis, I, I, if I'm forced to pick tonight's game, I will tell you this I would pick San Antonio because, again, I think they adjust. Yeah. I think they will change that game plan and come back, as you said, laser focused to win this game. All right, George? Yeah, I got the Spurs. I got the Spurs winning tonight. Right. Right. I'm staying by my point. I got Oklahoma City. I'm not right. backing off my point. Even though I got Two OKC, I'm about to say the same thing. thing. Sorry, OKC. I got yeah. OKC, and then you got them panicking. This is. And you got Spurs? No, I said Spurs panicking. Yeah, I said City, yeah. You're uh, wearing I, the Spurs. You're I, garnering Spurs I, colors. I understand that. Well, I can't wear Knicks colors. We, they won't, <laughs> yeah, no, they won't be relevant. Well, Phil's on vacation anyway. It wouldn't matter. He yeah, won't be able to see They it. won't be relevant to 2021, you yeah. know, at that standpoint. You know, but Oklahoma City, they win game three. You can see a little bit of panic in Spurs going into game well, four. Listen, don't panic because we do have to go to a break, but we will come back. But coming up next, so close yet so far, the Carolina Panthers almost had a perfect season. Instead, they finished with 15 wins in 15. So how many wins will they nab in 2016? We're going to play a little game of Oba Anda in the NFC. We'll be right back. You like me.